welcome to the Chronicle. Thank you. And um, congratulations for the acquisition um, of Zoom um, Wireless by Group Sonatel. To start with Khalifa, um, mm -hmm. can you give us a brief overview of Zoom Wireless? Okay. Um, thank you very much, and I'm very happy to be on your platform. Um, Zoom Wireless is a limited liability company in the Gambia, which was registered in December 2016. Um, the primary goal was to become an internet service provider. Um, December 2016, we all know that was the time when Gambia was going through a whole impasse. Um, and during that time, I was actually out of, I was in Israel to do research on internet connectivity, uh, late November. So for me, my motivation was to go and then understand why is it that as Gambians, we're not able to enjoy the internet the way we want to enjoy it. Is it, what are the fact factors affecting such a problem? Um, number one, is it infrastructure problem? Is it equipment? Is it um, just neglect? Or is it the cost of maybe the bandwidth? Or these are all factors. So in my quest to understand really why we have this problem so that as an entrepreneur, see how I can solve this problem. So I was in Israel, did research. Then I found out that you know, the technology is there, the capacity is here in Gambia. So it's a no-brainer why we shouldn't enjoy good internet. And I am an IT professional. I have a business that's in IT. Mm -hmm. And, and you, already, you already had the KMF technology. Exactly, exactly. So um, the problem I had with most of my clients is that we offer them services. They in turn tell us, hey, we really like how you guys handle our service. Now we're looking for internet connectivity. Can you recommend uh, an ISP or an operator? And usually when we do that, it's like we always come back having issues, having to, you know, when we do that, we don't make money out of it. What happens is that the client has problems. They call us and say, oh, we're having issues with our internet connectivity. So that puts us on the, in the middle for no reason. So for, uh, for me, that is what motivated me. And in December, I started working with a Gambian consultant to develop a business model that can actually be viable using good technology to be able to address the issues that we have. And we can move on to other important things as Gambians. So this was the reason why um, I, I started Zoom. Then after the impasse, um, we were ready to submit our application to Pura because Pura is a regulatory body mm. that does um, issue the license to be able to operate as an ISP. And on June 12, 2017, we were given the license um, based on what Pura looked at. Pura looks at the key, a lot of factors, your business plan, what impact you want to have in the market, you know, what type of service delivery, what type of technology, a very thorough analysis. Okay, we went through all of that process and we're able to get the license. That is the evolution of Zoom. Mm. Yes. And then what happened um, after that? Because um, people started getting to know about Zoom Wireless, mm -hmm. anticipating your services, mm -hmm. but then the wait continued, kept on going on and on and on. Mm -hmm. What happened? Yes, um, yes, a, a series of things. As an entrepreneur, when I, got, when I started the licensing process, um, we had a meeting as young entrepreneurs with the World Bank and a few key ministries in Gambia. And so the discussions were ongoing to find out, you know, what are the things that we're doing as youths, you know, to also help create more employment. So um, the topic of um, what, I am, what I do came up and, at the forum and I explained to the late the World Bank country coordinator, Louis Cord that you know, I want to get into the internet business. Um, why? Because we feel like at even the most basic level where we now notice that Gambia's granite is, the, the quality is getting worse, the granite that we export. And so we're trying to think of a phenomenon. Why is it that we're not able to have what we used to have before in terms of the quality? And so I came up along with a friend who is, an, is a granite expert, Mr. Momartal. And we said, because another factor could be now is only the women are left in the village because the young ones want to come to the city to enjoy the lights, 
the connectivity and all of that. And we even know of situations where people during the impasse would leave about 100 kilometers plus to just go and download their data, WhatsApp messages to know what is happening and go back and inform people. So these are all factors that made us understand this. So when I explained this to Mrs. Scott, she was really impressed. Um, and it made sense, right? So she decided that you know she would keep track of our progress with our project. And when we got the license, and I also let her know that we're trying to raise money to be able to build the infrastructure. I'm a young entrepreneur. I don't have millions in the bank to get up and then you know mm. put a state-of-the-art infrastructure. Mm. But I knew and, that and you were and you were going to compete with um, entrepreneurs and companies that already had the money. Exactly. with state-of-art equipment, um, how were you able to do that? How were you going to do this? What were your plans? Yeah, it was just my bravery, and I think we adopted a model that was very disruptive. Um, we knew that uh, we, we, there's ways to get into this market that we can come in and then disrupt the market. We only thought of how can we grow this market, because the market is very small for fixed wireless. Um, less than 5,000 homes are connected. So, and we have almost 250,000 homes, according to um, GVOS statistics. So it tells you that there is a market, even if we can grow it to 20,000, 50,000, there is a market for another five players, because most ISPs here are, are with less than 3,000 clients or 2,000 clients. So definitely we saw a market. Yeah. And, and to fast forward the story, mm -hmm. um, then you went into acquisition talks yeah, so with, uh, with Group Sonata. Yeah, so what happened was um, we got introduced to the IFC, which is the World Bank's um, lending arm for, for loans for private businesses. So we wanted to take a loan from the IFC because in Gambia you cannot take a loan from our banks because of the amount that is involved. So we did a um, call with um, the IFC. But the ticket size we were looking for was a bit smaller than what they usually do. So we felt, okay. And then they advised us that there's a venture capital firm in Senegal that really is doing wonders, uh, which is Teranga Capital. Mm -hmm. They're investing in small businesses, um, helping the business grow. Not only that, but helping them manage the business to get it to a level where it can actually be a viable business. And obviously, for me, that interested me a lot. So. Um, I contacted Teranga and they asked me to send them my business plan, which I had done all of that during the impasse. So I had everything, the business was well structured, um, everything was taken into consideration. Knowing that you're looking for investors, you need to be as transparent as possible. So I did that and um, Teranga really liked the project. We did a lot of trips for two years, we've been working on this back and forth. We even had to do a survey of up to 2,000 homes in the Gambia just to understand what are the needs of the people. So a lot of work was done just to prove to Taranga that there's a viable market in the Gambia, which I was very happy to do. I must say that um, I had students from Nusrat um, Secondary School whom I hired about 30 of them, mm. and we all did it together. So that showed Taranga that we were really serious about what we wanted to do. And Taranga is also partly owned by Sonatel. Sonatel. So when they got our dossier, they said, okay, we will recommend it to one of our technical partners to see what, whether they're interested. But when, when you knock on the doors of Teranga, you were not mm -hmm. indirectly trying to contact Sonatel, group Sonatel. No, never. I, I actually didn't know the connection of Sonatel and Teranga until later on when this started coming to light. So for me, it was just um, something that came um, out of you know, the work we were doing. We, we, we believed that we were going to work with only Taranga. And then in the end, Sonata were really impressed with the project. They liked the project. So we started discussions. Um, they came to Gambia for almost three, three, four times to do like study of the ground, study the market, meet with banks, financial institutions, meet with Pura. With and the at, the, and at, at all those meetings and discussions, there was always Zoom wireless in the heart of it. Yes, it was mainly Zoom at the center of it. Mm. And um, in the end, um, they were really happy with the project. We went through the due diligence, um, which involved even visiting private institutions, banks, our clients. 
And all of this was done because of the way Orange works. They are always adamant of who they deal with to make sure that you're the right person of the right caliber. So I, I, I was very confident in myself that whatever was put against us, we were, we were, we were going to pass the due diligence. And lo and behold, we passed that and we reached an agreement. Mm. And it was always acquisition. Yes, it was always, basically what we wanted really is, and is what has happened, is that we wanted a partner that can come in, give us money and let us work. Obviously you do that, you get your, you get your share in the business. So it's purely business and this is exactly what has happened. We're even lucky this time that we have someone that has the technical expertise to be able to um, manage this product, project They've done it successfully in different countries, so I don't see why Gambia cannot benefit from that. Mm. I mean, no. and, the, and the accusation is 91.6%. Yes. Um, which, to a layman, to anybody else, mm -hmm. would be, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot. Yes. Where, where do you come in? I own um, a, a percentage as well, mm -hmm. and Teranga also owns a minority stake. Um, what this means is that this is a bigger project than I even ever thought of. Okay, um, when we started, we just wanted the greater Banjul area network and grow. But now we're looking at a monster project, um, something that would serve Gambians from day one. So uh, for me, I would rather take a small pie, piece of the pie, than be greedy and get 100% of nothing. So I was willing to do that. And for me, I see the business case. I see that it can benefit me, but there is a goal here. We want to connect the unconnected. So if Sonatel and Teranga have the capacity to do that for us, I am willing to do that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now let's look at the, right after this was initially announced, mm -hmm. informally, mm -hmm. um, to today, Monday, mm -hmm. April 29, mm -hmm. when um, the deal, the acquisition has been announced by Group Sonatel mm -hmm. um, formally. Mm -hmm. It has attracted and sparked a lot of interest, mm -hmm. especially online, social media. Mm -hmm. A lot of Gambians are concerned. Yeah. And it's a lot of concerns that they raised. Yeah. Among the concerns is, mm -hmm. here is Zoom Wireless. Mm -hmm. You've registered, you license, mm -hmm. but you've not started operations. Mm -hmm. And here is a giant telecoms provider mm -hmm. coming to acquire the company, 91.6% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to, to, to roll out business. Mm -hmm. And what the concern is, mm -hmm. people are concerned that this wasn't contrary to what you've said before, what your intentions are mm -hmm. um, and all that. It's an opportunity for Senegal mm -hmm. to come into the Gambian market and you were used and you used yourself mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. that happen. <laughs> How do you react? Um, I think if you look at the global market and, and you look around the world, is that the trend is that you partner with people to get projects done. You understand? It's not about whether he's Chinese, he's Lebanese, he is Indian, or he's Senegalese. For us, our goal was to implement our project. Our goal is to connect our people. I was never used. This is something that God just put together for, for us. Because for me, how it even happened and how I got into dealing with Orange, I never dreamt of it. And it shows that as a young entrepreneur, that other Gambians should use me as an example to work with foreign partners. Um, for a long time, our parents, our, our, the, the people before us in the business community, they weren't partnering with foreign investors the way this deal has happened. This is something that is unique, that it shows you, youths that you don't have to sit there and say, I don't have money. It's that when you build a business and you build it right, people will come. And when, whether it's Senegalese, whether it's French, whether it's you know, Ghanaian, it doesn't matter. What matters is the people of the Gambia benefits from mm. what is one of our biggest challenges. When you leave Gambia, the first thing you notice is how good and relieved you are when you have good internet. 
And this is something that we are not proud of. I am not proud of. So for me, this makes me feel like it's, it's good for us. Mm. So I was never used. That can never happen. Mm. So, so, mm -hmm. so Sonatel, Group Sonatel being mm -hmm. Senegalese mm -hmm. and Senegalese coming here mm -hmm. is one thing. Mm -hmm. But another concern is why would mm -hmm. a huge, mm -hmm. powerful provider like Group Sonatel mm -hmm. would come to acquire mm -hmm. a small company mm -hmm. that has not even you know, set up the ground yet? Is that, is that usual? Does that sound usual, normal to you? It is normal, because if you look at the likes of Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, they were nothing when they were being bought billions of dollars. So for me, but what really matters is the license is valuable. To get a license is not you just go to a store and buy it. You have to go through a process. And we went through that process. And what we should not forget is that operators like Sonatel or Orange, are not going to just get into any business without doing their homework. Okay, a lot of work was put into this project. The problem is most businesses do not build themselves to be sold from what I've seen in the Gambia. So it makes it very difficult for a company to come and try to buy into another business. Okay, so for me, Zoom was built in a shell. It was made to look good so that any investor that comes in, whether be it orange, whether be it an individual, that was my plan. I knew that I couldn't finance it myself. So I was going to bring in people to put together and then believe in me that I can implement this project. And so for me, I made sure that everything was transparent. We went through a rigorous due diligence, okay? Which means that Sonatel, knew what they were doing and why they were getting into it. And just because Zoom hadn't started operations, we were very active in Gambia. We sponsored the Fashion Weekend Gambia, which was two years ago. We've done a lot of other um, CSR programs, but we were not looking at getting money back. We knew that we were working on something that was going to be great for this country. And in the end, we have realized that. So for me, I am very happy about that.